Alright, what's good people? It's your boy here. Just bringing you another video. Right back in my little chill spot. And I'm here to talk about Ready Player One. And what better way to review a movie about VR but, well, in VR. And this game is big screen for all y'all that don't know. It's not even a game. It's a um, social meeting place within VR. Alright? So... I'm here to talk about the movie Ready Player One, and I'm going to do a quick review of the movie, but then I also want to talk about some of the tech in the movie because I feel this movie is very important, as in showing everyone the way this world is going in, all right? And then I have some things to show you if you don't even believe me, when you, if you do get out there and see this movie, and you probably think to yourself like, man, all that stuff is just too crazy that's not even coming right so remember in the movie it is 2045 and i'm going to show you stuff that is going on right now that's pretty close to that i think it's the software that's being held behind and i think it might take till 2045 or something like that to get the software to the level that it was in this movie all right so um as i talk a little bit more about the movie I'm going to first start it off by rolling a trailer for it, all right? My name is Wade. So, as you watch the trailer behind me, I want to talk about this movie. So, you see that kid right there? Right? His name is Wade Watts. I'm not giving anything away in the movies. No spoiler him right there because he even says his name in the trailer, all right? So, they're in Columbus, Ohio. 2020 2045 right so that's way 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 in the future from now right and i don't know what happened i guess the economy tanked or something like that if you read the book then you'll know about it the, the economy tanked and everything like that and people kind of because a lot of people are unemployed they just kind of lock themselves away in virtual reality well this guy that made this massive multiplayer game that everybody loves to play he dies right and he leaves an, a hidden thing that these guys are now trying to find so that's what they're talking about in this trailer right so no spoilers it's all about how this whole thing comes together and this is the good thing right Steven Spielberg does a phenomenal job in building this world, building this virtual world, and, and giving you a grand adventure to have in it, right? The action sequence in this, phenomenal. The scale in which they do things, also over the top, because if, I guess they figured it's a virtual reality world. We can make this as big as we want to, and they sure did. Did not disappoint in that thing. Now, is this movie a perfect movie? No, nothing is perfect. I don't think we'll always like every single thing about every movie. But there's so much that is good here in this movie. There's so much, like, funness to it. You know what I mean? And you could just even look in the trailer. This movie is just downright exciting and fun fun to watch you know what i mean marvel's been killing the um the theater right now so it's good to see another type of movie that just comes out and give you that same excitement and fun like the marvel movies do and this ready player one kills it nails it in every sense of the matter right and it goes to show that this it wasn't about a video game as per se it was more about a book on video game. You know, hold on, hear me, me. Yeah, it, it was, you know, from a book on video game. Right? And, and it was just kind of what this, you know, writer dreamt of, you know, what the world and virtual reality would be. And he got so much, uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to say he got so much right, but he probably, he was always talking to the people that are doing this stuff, and he put it forth so you guys can see what this world is about to bring. 
Now, without getting into spoilers on this movie, right? Oh, man. I, it's just so much I just want to blurt out because this movie was so good. But like I said, I'm going to keep it spoiler free. Keep it spoiler free. All right. So since I really wanted to talk about the tech in the movie and I don't want to give too much about the movie away, I'm going to just start talking about the tech. All right. So one of the first things I want to bring up and show you guys is this. It's this thing called the Infinity Deck. All right. I know it got quiet. I'm going to probably during that moment flash up a little picture about what the infinity that looked like but now i want to play you like uh, um it's a, it's actually in kickstarter you know what i mean it might be even out of kickstarter right about now i kind of just wanted to grab the video clips and then because it's something i was reading about a long time but this is somewhat in the movie so i wanted to show you guys this so when you see it in the movie you can be like oh my god that stuff is starting to come true right now Look at this, look at this. This is this is crazy. This is crazy, right? Right? It's like you're walking on this thing and you can be going on forever. Now, what I don't like about it is those big giant bars around you, you know, because now your arm is going to, like, bang into them when you're doing stuff in VR, because look, see how I'm, how, how I'm doing a wall free all over the place, and I can just see my head, like, banging into stuff, right? But it is going to show, like, some of the things that we are already getting done in VR. Now, this thing is probably expensive, like I don't know what, right? I'm going to stop right there. That thing is probably so expensive. And and hopefully um, some of the sounds that we were just playing don't drown out what I was talking about because that would really be crappy. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that thing is like, I don't know. It's probably cost a couple grand in order to do that, you know? And so... It's going to take years before that stuff becomes cheap enough that they, someone can have it in your house, right? Let me show you something else here. So now this is the catwalk, right? So that you, you'll notice they had some advanced version of what this would be like in the, um, in the show, in the movie, right? It, it, they blended, what they actually did was blended what you saw just now and this together. Like it supports his weight, you know what I mean? It's all out of his way, his hand is free to move wherever. There's no bars around him blocking him or anything like that. I think that is a very good thing right there. And when you see in the movie what they do with that, you'll be very impressed too, because I think they did a great job with that, especially, like I said, because they combined that with the, um, yeah, they combined that along with the, the one that we noticed before here. Let me bring that back up and show you guys once again. Yeah, actually. Yeah, let's start right there. Yeah, I want you, I want to show you, I want to bring this back up so you guys can see this again, you know. This they had look, picture this thing right here, but with the ability to move around like you saw in that other um, video, right? And had something, you know, supporting their weight and so they're jumping around and it wasn't their actual, their strength or their legs. So they were able to be in the air like they, you know, it's, it's just crazy. It's this crazy way they do things in that movie and, and to show you guys stuff like that, all right? Now, last but not least, 
I wanted to show is the it's they had some haptic suits in that movie. So I figured I wanted to show you this. VR games rely on sight and sound alone to engage the user. Never before has hardware existed to let you feel the virtual world. Until now. Immerse yourself in the sensation of touch and experience virtual reality gaming like never before. This is the Hard Light Suit. Hi, my name is Morgan Cinco. I am the CEO right, and founder so of Null Space That's VR. a haptic suit. That's something stuff. that makes you move now. You know, we got these headsets that make us see these virtual the world. The we got these controllers that let us control our hands in these virtual world. And now they have these suits and you can put on that is going to make it feel those virtual worlds. Haptics now, the thing about it is, hold on. allows to reproduce. There's not going to be any games that take, you know, this into account just yet. Because why? It's this thing is. I think this thing is like three hundred dollars, and so not a lot of people are going to buy this thing right off the bat. Especially if they got to buy a four hundred dollar headset, a eight hundred dollar computer, and then um, you know, if you add in those treadmill that I just showed you, that's probably like another thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for those. And then, you know, I mean, it, this hard light suit was just $300. So you're talking like three grand worth of equipment right there. Three to four grand, right? So, I mean, but this is the starting stage of this stuff. So if probably in another, you know, 10 to 15 years, those stuff that we we're watching in Ready Player One, Will be right in our living rooms you know me i'll probably be too old and still be sitting on my butt right so now after i just showed you all that tech i know some of you guys were saying well you started this off like it was a movie review and all you talked about was wow this movie's great wow this thing is awesome wow 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 yeah um i think i just said wow too much as in a way to make myself look corny as i move on to this next topic but to finish off, I just want to say, because I didn't want to give too many spoilers off, right? And so I wanted to fill that point with, you know, talking about the text and, and how some of the tech that you see in the movie, um, you know, translate over into what's coming in the real world currently within the next few years. But so I'm just going to go off and give a score and I feel like I want to actually do dig a little bit into the movie. So after I give a score, I am then going to give a little bit of spoilers. Okay, so after I give a score, you guys can then stop the video, get away if you don't want to know too much about the movie and what I thought was great about the movie and what I thought was also a misstep about the movie. All right. Okay. And... So I get, would give this movie, if I had to do it a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely give this movie about an 8. All right? A solid 8 at that. I think it was very well done. There was a couple missteps in this movie, which I will talk about just shortly in spoilers. But overall, it's a fantastic ride. And, it, and it's like a movie that from start to finish, the director had his foot on the pedal and didn't ease up one bit and it was a very good thing so i definitely highly recommend that you guys go ahead and see that like i said an eight out of ten i'm going to pause for a second hmm hmm so if you're still with me i want to talk about the spoilers now first of all before I start ripping, I'm not going to say like ripping the movie apart, but I want to start talking about the good stuff first. So like I'm saying, pacing in this movie is like, it's at breakneck speed. They start this movie off with a, a great sequence, which is this race. And and, and like, like a high speed race, they had their foot on the gas and did not let up for a second in this movie. Right. There is a couple, I mean, like slow down moments, but those slow down moments were short and few in between. All right. It was like an emotional second or two, and then it moves right ahead. Now, that pacing was, it was a breast effect here because it felt like this movie went 
by very quickly. So quick, in fact, that I think now this is, um, wait, 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 before I even get there, before I even get there, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, like I like to say, this movie is not like the book, and that's in a good way too, right? Scale of this movie, it is fantastic. This thing is huge, and the book was huge too, but the story in which was told in the book and some of the sequence in which things were displayed in the book would have been pretty much impossible to put on a movie screen. So in changing the book in that sense, was the right thing to do, all right? So, <clears throat> and one of the things is, in the book, Parzival gets himself captured by, you know, the, um, the uh, I forgot the name of that company, but the bad guys, you know, he gets himself captured, he goes in, he hacks a bunch of stuff, he gets some information on them, he sets up a little code thing, and boom, boom, boom. It's all this really great, you know, spy thing. But except the thing is, this kid is not a spy. It's a kid. And in the book, it kind of felt like out of place. Like it didn't make sense. Like we understand this guy is a gamer. We understand this guy was a hacker. But some of the extent that he went to the plan and he came up with felt really big. Like it was some kind of espionage plot. All right. So in the book, I felt like like that just didn't do right. So but in the movie, the way they did it made so much more sense. And that was to the credit of the director and knowing that that wouldn't have went right. But also in Ernest Klein, because he helped write the screenplay for this movie. And you could tell that he knew that that setup wasn't right. And so they flipped it around. And it's like Artemis is captured in trying to let Parzable free and how they work together as a team to do, to come to the same results of what was happening in the book. All right. And then that last battle, epic, 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 epic. It was so huge, right? It was, it was like. Braveheart in a video game scene, right? If you just could imagine having the biggest raid ever, you know what I mean? They, I think like, um, what game is that? Eve Online, when they had that huge like battle that even made it on 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 TV because it was so huge. Picture that. In a first person, third person's perspective, and you're there on the ground with your guns out and you're throwing punches and you you whipping knives and your swords all over the place. And and it's like millions of people are there doing it with you, right there. Just just oh my god, mind boggling and and then to think about the computing that would be necessary to pull something like that off <gasps> man I, I i mean it takes my breath away and i cannot wait to the moment that we can have i i can turn on the tv and see that some epic battle is going on where thousands of players are playing against themselves doing some crazy stuff because it's it's going to happen someday mark my word that's going to happen and and so just just i don't know if it's just the nerd in me just picturing myself being a part of that someday and and knowing that this thing is is just a matter of getting cloud computing down and the bandwidth on our internet just a bit more faster that we can get something that huge and that epic into a video game is just mind-boggling to me All right now the ending now that they chose to go with in the movie, I, I feel kind of lacked something. I felt a little bit more within the, the ending of the book. I think the book, I, I like the ending in the book. You know what I mean? I, I like kind of the way it is. I kind of understand, though, how it made a little bit more sense in the movie. But, you know what I mean? because of some of the way they chose to do something 
now I'm going to have to get into the issues of the movie, right? This is the glaring issue of the movie. This movie should have been at least another 15 to 20 minutes longer, right? Because people just show up out of nowhere and we don't know why these people are up out of nowhere, okay? Like, Parzable just escaped in an alleyway. They don't show it like it's days later and then H just shows up, right? Like, that doesn't make sense, right? So if they would have did like a five-minute scene of Parzable giving H a phone call saying, hey, me, you know, how far can, how quick can you get here or something like that? Um, and then, he, you know, H is like, give me two hours and I can be in that city where you are. But to think like all of the friends all lived in the same city and they never met each other, never had a chance to even meet up in the real world. I mean, it just didn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Especially when two out of the five were Japanese. And, and I don't mean like American Japanese, like they had a Japanese, they had an accent, like they were, you know, straight from Japan at the, or whatever like that. And so that kind of made me be like, wait, this doesn't, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm enjoying the movie. I'm just going to overlook that, right? And then there's another scene where at the end of the movie where one of the old owners of the that helped create the game just pops up out of nowhere again and i'm like and he's like i've been watching you you know i've been around and he shows that he was you know the the curator you know and 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 help been helping them out the whole entire time but at the same time i mean they had no they didn't give any inclination that I mean, boom, they were right in the same town. And then to have Parzival and Artemis is like, does everyone who lives in, in Columbus, Ohio back in that future? Because I don't know. It just feels weird that they all live in the same city. And it could have took, like I said, five to 20 minutes this, these quick scenes of nothing more than, say, a phone call or him talking to Artemis on a thing like, hey, Artemis, and she's like, you know what I mean? Like, um, like when the guy gets him out and, and instead of just taking him straight to Artemis, just drops him off at a bus thing like, hey, a friend of mine told, you, told me to get you on the bus. You know what I mean? Hands him a ticket. He goes on this bus ride. He hides off and Artemis meets him there. Boom! That would have been hot. You know what I mean? It, it literally would have took like a five minute scene of showing him getting on the bus, showing a couple, you know, two or three minutes of them taking that trip, you know, showing the different cities that they're going through. Then him getting off the bus, meeting Artemis, and she's taking him and telling him about the rebellion. You know what I mean? And then when, how they get Shoto and, and um, Saito there, they could have just easily just, Show the two of them talking on the phone and coming through an airport. Like, we're, we're coming out to help. I'm sorry. I know I'm nitpicking here. But this these type of things just kind of just clearly stands out to me. You know what I mean? I, I, I know all my friends tell me I'm a little hypercritical. And I just rambled on about that. But these are the things that, you know, I think kind of held this movie back from being an amazing movie like this movie should have been damn near perfect i should have gave this a 10 out of 10 but an 8 out of 10 is not bad and it's just enough like i said if people get out and watch it and we start talking to our friends about the tech in vr that would bring the attention to virtual reality and maybe you know blow things up a bit for us all right people but hopefully you enjoy this review slash rant for a moment and also me showing you guys a couple of the things that's coming in vr in the near future okay all right people one